Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, lax rats alike, welcome back to another episode of The Crease Dive. Today is Thursday, February 16th, getting these episodes out a day earlier. I'm Jordy from Barstool, and let me tell you right now, the state of college lacrosse is just pure chaos and anarchy. We are joined, as always, by Dukes in the lab. Dukes, it was a wild week in the world of college lacrosse. Upsets galore. Uh, how, how are we feeling this week? Dumb. I don't know my left from right, right from left. Uh, walking in circles around the city. Can't find my work. Can't find my apartment. I just, I'm clueless. I'm dumb right now. But chaos is upon us. And we're not talking about the PLL. We're talking about college across. Th- those otherwise known as the, as the chouse. We're, we're talking about yeah, but yeah, Pro- proper crazy proper chouse. Uh, yeah, insane weekend in college. I'll tell you what, probably the craziest dude. Like there was like an hour of Saturday afternoon that was just, and I, I put out a tweet about this where there was so much going on that it was impossible to follow all of it at the same time. Which is why I like, dude. At one point, the Virginia Michigan game was a one goal game. Hopkins Georgetown was a one goal game. Duke Jacksonville was a one goal game and Maryland Loyola were tied at like at that specific, all four of those games, all of them were either within one goal or tied. Like it was, it was a wild time on Saturday afternoon. Um, And one that I will say we need a red zone for college across. I put this tweet out there on Saturday. There's just so much going on. I can't be flipping around from channel to channel from ESPN plus stream to ESPN plus stream to, to watch all of it at the same time. I need, I need a, a Chris Hansen to do all of it for me. Maybe it could be a, a Dan Arestia or a Chris Jast, but I like, I need someone to clue me in on when the big things are happening. I need like quad box. I, I need it all. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Who would you? Who would be your Chris Hansen if you got one pick? If I had, hmm, like I would love for it to be a niche, but I wouldn't want to take a niche away from from actually calling a game. Like, I would. I would. Yeah. Because here's yourself. the thing: like, this is bigger. This is bigger than just you a niche. I mean, sincerely, it would be one of those things that could only be broadcasted on like the lacrosse network. I don't know who else. Well, that's it, it, listen, if it's, yes, well, like, let's say, let's say we go lack sports net. I don't even know if lack sports net's still a thing anymore, but if it is Travis Eldridge at lack sports net, I like, I think that he could, yeah. he, he could handle that. And listen, I would be much more willing to spend like 10 bucks a month for lack sports net. If they gave us a college lacrosse red zone, as opposed to doing like five bucks a month for big 10 plus. Although we're going to get to this in a bit, the big tens fucking wide open this year. So big 10 plus might actually be worth it this year where it's not just going to be, you're spending however many dollars a month just to watch Maryland shit pump everybody. Um, yeah. If, if we did something like that on lack sports, I was like trying to think like, I love Kark, but it couldn't be Kark because he, he wouldn't like actually pay attention to Like he'd end up talking about, how like Peter Garno like drives the ball 300 yards. Dude. One of my favorite things that Clark does every single time that Peter Garno gets brought up during a Virginia game always slides in that he drives the ball 300 yards when he golfs. Um, <laughs> I'm, t- I'm telling you every, like everyone who listened to me, heard, hear, everyone who heard me say that right there, the next time Clark's on a Virginia call, you're going to notice it. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of like the Adler shark bite. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, no, but, yeah, I, do, uh, I yeah. totally agree. We do need to have a uh, a red zone. It would just make it would just make it everything better. And even just like if you have like ESPN Plus, like we're just games on like ESPN Two, ESPN U, all being able to get them onto like the four quad boxes. And like I just think in today's day and age, every single Roku, Fubu, whatever the hell it is, you should have a quad box automatically ready to go. Update that shit. Like it should just be a necessity at this point yeah i did see um so i think someone mentioned where 
the if you have ESPN Plus and an Apple TV, yes, you're able to do that. Here's the thing: I don't have an Apple TV. That's so what I'm saying. Like everybody should like, yeah, yeah. But like, but like, don't tell me, oh, well, if you have ESPN Plus and an Apple TV, you can do it because I don't have that. So like, I don't yeah. give a shit about that. If you have Apple Plus and an e- if you have ESPN Plus and Apple Plus, you probably also have like a trampoline in your backyard and a pool. I mean, just like brag more that you're loaded. Yeah, yeah, in ground um, for sure. Yeah, no, yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh um but yeah so listen huge huge weekend and probably one of the more chaotic that we saw in in quite some time so i mean just a couple upsets for you here so maryland they lose their first uh, this was their first regular season loss in damn near like this weekend right now coming up will be three years since their first since their last regular season loss so, you know, Maryland went all of 2022 undefeated. 2021, they only lost that game, uh, the championship game to Virginia. Then you go back to 2020, right before COVID ended, they, uh, they dropped a, a regular season game there. But so they go down 12 to 7 to Loyola. So huge upset for the Greyhounds. Um, one where, again, this right hand up, this is, this is on us. We previewed this game heading into the weekend wondering what like what the the status what the future of the Loyola program look like because if you were to bet if you were to find any lines on this game it looked like Maryland was about to wax Loyola by double digits I believe if there were to be lines on it it would be somewhere near like eight and a half um so Loyola getting all sorts of disrespect hanging into that game Mm -hmm. they take down a team that hasn't lost the regular season game in three years yeah, so Greyhounds. Greyhounds are back. I'll get into this when we talk about the weekend preview. But yeah, it's uh, a lot of teams are back. Are they back? The McNaney situation. McNaney, um, you know, I, I've had a, a toxic relationship with Logan McNaney. Where two years ago, I think I, I was just outright saying he sucked. Last year, I took everything I knew back. Um, torn ACL, he has. He's out for the year. So I'm not going to be too hard but 20 ACL or not he couldn't stop a beach ball that's like that's no. a, that's, a, that's a fact right that's not being it, mean. it was it was it was listen here's the thing like it's it was not a good day for logan mcnaney i don't have uh like he has the like actual... he me, you have the I, like i had a torn acl so like you have like the like toughness shit whatever like so a little part of me is like how how much should we look how hurt was he at the start of the game right because cl- playing with the torn ACL is just not easy. So, like, maybe he just shouldn't have played at all. How hurt was he going into the game? Luke Weirman still fucking got the job done. Like, he he's the best face-off guy in college across for, for all I'm concerned. Um, I'm not so sure how much to look into this Maryland loss. So, I, I think the one thing – so, one, like, McNaney just – he he had a really bad – so, five saves on the day. And what was worse is that – like you think about all the like w- close game, close game, close game. All of a sudden, like Loyola would just get these like transition, like so many transition goals right in a way where like Maryland couldn't get a single stop in transition if they tried. And I couldn't really tell if it was like, I don't think it was necessarily like bad transition defense. It's just like they gave up an outside shot in transition. You're kind of hoping that your goalie, who's you know national champion winner, would would stop someone, and he just couldn't get any of those stops. So, um, I think that their their woes defensively in this game, you might not be able to look into that much, considering like you don't know how much the the torn ACL actually did uh, impact McNaney or not. And you know, listen, shout out to Logan McNaney, won a national championship, brought the team to another, um, you know. Great, great player, and it's, it sucks that he's going to miss the season. Didn't have a great game last week. Dude, I think the one thing, though, where you can start to really look into with this Maryland loss, and this is something where we didn't – we probably should have made a bigger deal out of this when it happened, but, like, they don't have a number one on offense anymore. Like, I think that the moment that Makar got the, the number one jersey, I think that that should have been a bigger sign to us that like this is kind of what's going to be 
not expected out of Maryland all season. Like I'm sure that they're still going to have some huge offensive performances, but like we should probably get used to the fact that they don't have a Rambo or a Bernhardt or a, a, a Wisnowskis on offense this year. Like they just don't have that guy where if shit's going down, you know, you can put the ball on his stick and it's going to end up in the back of the net. Like they, they just, they don't have that. And like, I want to kind of choose my words a little carefully here because there are some really solid offensive players on that roster. Um, you know, Owen Murphy is, is a, a great player. Uh, you know, Kyle Long probably I think has the best vision in, in college across. Um, you know, I think that Eric Spanos is a name that if you're a Maryland fan, like that's the future of your offense right there moving forward. But like, they just don't have that Brambo Bernhardt was now sky right now. And to be fair, I didn't think that they had it last year with Wisnowskis. I proved me wrong. He got, he got the numbers up, but it's not really like he was at the forefront of people's minds as a uh, Toroton award winner last year until like what week five, I would say week six. Like, it's not like people came in being like everyone was saying O'Neill, Schellenberger, Kavanaugh, same, same names as this year. So the number one for Maryland can emerge. Um, I do think you brought up some good names. I mean, I, I think that Eric Murphy, uh, Owen Murphy's a stud. Uh, Daniel Kelly, Jack Brennan, just malts. So I think that they just have like very, very good lacrosse players. I, I've compared it in the past, like Villanova basketball, where it's just the cohesiveness of Maryland. Um, I, I, I'm seriously not worried about them at all. I honestly, I want to, I want to save, I want to save some takes for our buy sell segment. Do you are, are, are is the take that you kind of have rattling around in your head right now saying that maybe this loss for Maryland is the best thing that could have happened to them? Look, the loyal the loyal goalie played the game of his life. Played the game of his 19 saves against the number two team in the country. 70 70 plus percent save percentage. Maryland wins 80% of the faceoffs. And they're not just getting like a backup goalie that's coming into the cage. Like I get you like national champion, Logan McNaney. Teddy Dolan's a really fucking good goalie. The kid started at when he was a freshman. There you go. Yeah, like he – the kid's a stud. He was an American East Defensive Player of the Year. If he, he probably could have gone to a lot of schools. Right away, you're going to be our fifth-year goalie. But he wanted him to go to Maryland. He wanted to probably chase a national championship. Didn't really care if he was a backup. Got a good degree. He didn't care. Like he, Maryland's getting a. They have the. I'll say it right now. Teddy Dolan's going to get drafted by the, in the PLL after after this year. Like he's going to be a name that emerges as one of the best goalies in the country, and I'm not going to be surprised if he he's in finishes like top three All American. That's my take. That. That's 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 some high praise. I think his brother started at Maryland, where it was the phantom goal against Virginia. Um, I think that Teddy Dolan is going to be a name that everybody has um, in their mock drafts and has as one of the best goalies in the country at the, at the end of the year. I truly do. Played at Binghamton, a no name. So I, I don't know. I think that Maryland's going to be just fine. Listen, I, I think that Maryland's going to be just fine too. I think that, you know, yeah, may, maybe a loss here to a. Uh... An unexpectedly good Loyola team. Um, and, and we'll see a little bit more of Loyola this weekend when they have Hopkins. I think, you know, it's, it, it's, they haven't lost in fucking forever. So maybe it, it's good to kind of get them reset, refocused here. What? But I will say that I, I, I think though that the Big Ten this year, the gap is definitely, the, the gap is, is getting a little bit closer. Like last year, the gap was astronomical. Yeah, it, it, the only way for it to go was to get closer. Last year was astronomical. There was never any doubt that Maryland would kick the shit out of any other team in the Big Ten. This year, you look around, and Hopkins, listen, obviously, so we're recording this on Wednesday. It's coming out on Thursday. This is right after Hopkins just lost and, and gave up a, a multi-goal lead uh, to UNC. But on Saturday... Hopkins was as back as they've ever been before where they take down Georgetown. Um, nice little 13 to 12 win for George or for Hopkins. They went to two and zero. 
Um, Hopkins is just playing some really good ball right now. Granted, they didn't finish strong in the second half against UNC, but Hopkins is playing really well. Ohio State's going to be a really good team. Uh, Michigan was playing Virginia as tight as could be. I thought that that I thought that if if any team, Michigan had the easily easily the best loss of the weekend. Um, like you look at what they did last year where, you know, they start off the season seven and zero playing against a bunch of shit bags. Like, I think that losing what well, I think the final score there was 17 to 13 to Virginia, yep. even though they, they kept it to like a one goal game for the longest time before Connor Schellenberger remembered that he's the best player in the world right now. Um, but to keep it that close with Virginia for that long, infinitely more impressive than anything that they did to start the season last year. So Michigan's going to be a good team. Uh, Penn state. I don't know. They, they ended up losing to Villanova over the weekend. They looked good against Lafayette, but I feel like anyone can look good against Lafayette. So we'll still see about Penn state, but do the big 10, like right now, the big 10, I'm not going to say that it's wide open. It's still the big 10 still runs through Maryland. And until another big 10 team takes down Maryland, like that'll always be the case. I'm just saying though that the gap is is much tighter than it was last year. Yeah, like I think that Maryland, when they go undefeated in Big Ten play this year, it's going to be with a lot closer games than it was last year. So if that's closing the gap, because I just don't think I'll I'll hold back some takes, but are we going to slow down on the Hopkins' back stuff? Because I I admit I was wrong. They're not as bad or like as not back as they were, but. Well, so I, I think that we well, actually – end- the if, they if they beat Virginia or Maryland once, I said they have to get the Georgetown win, and they have to get one more. So if they beat Virginia or Maryland, I will firmly call them back. But I think that we actually nailed that take. It looked re- it looked bad for us on Saturday after they take down Georgetown. Although, to be fair, we've also said that Georgetown is – Frauds. I did. You said that they're frauds. I said that they're, they're on – you got to show me, right? You got got it. This is a big time show me year for the Georgetown Hoyas. Um, and like you think back to their now their last two games, they blow a big lead that they had against Delaware uh, in the tournament last year. They come out and they open up their season against Hopkins. They blow a lead against Hopkins. Uh, so Georgetown, yeah, I, I think they were a show me team before this game creeping a little bit closer to listen it's it's one game I'm not, I'm not ready to put them on fraud alert yet but they're at least on fraud watch i'll put them on fraud watch not fraud alert or whichever one which one is is more serious when it comes to a tornado if the, is it is a tornado watch worse than a tornado oh, alert yes tornado watch wait yes whichever one means that it's not like Whichever one means that the tornado is not there. So there, I, I'll put them on fraud watch, not alert. Um, but back to where we're saying about Hopkins, I feel like we nailed that take where we said, though, that they are Texas football, where mm-hmm. they'll have those big moments where everyone's like, we're back, we're back, we're back, right? The band's playing, uh, you know, the, the crowd's chanting, we want more. And then you mm-hmm. follow that up. With a, loss a with a loss against yeah exactly so um, I mean listen that that game against Georgetown super exciting game comes down to the wire feel a little bad for Tucker Dordovic who had a, a a great debut for the Hoyas five goals on the day but like dude I I don't really know what Georgetown's thinking when it's like everything we've ever seen from Tucker Dordovic is the kid fucking scores goals like like no other the final possession of a game, you might not want to set them up to throw a skip pass because like no one's ever like, yo, Tucker Dordovic's the best distributor we've ever seen. The guy's got great vision. Guy can just hit, hit yeah. skips. Like it's nobody's business, right? He just fills the back of the net. So I don't know. It seems like, I don't, I don't know if that was a Tucker Dordovic just trying to a little, little too much dip on his chip trying to, to be the hero in his debut um, or if that was a plan or what that was, but just something that Georgetown probably needs to figure out in the future where, listen, the guy can give you five goals in a game. Just don't make them try to find a skip pass in the final possession of a one goal game. Cause that's just not his game. 
Yeah, I bet he probably was expecting like an early slot or something, clearly, and was trying to play a little bit of hero ball, trying to be LeBron James, look Le- like LeBron James hero ball, being like probably like throwing a pass that maybe he's not he, he's not used to making all the time. So I, I, I agree. I think that was a bad last possession for Georgetown. I feel bad for Dordovic. Um, amazing debut besides that. Obviously wanted to get a dub after that, but uh, maybe that's need the George, uh, a loss that Georgetown needed, to be honest. Um, I, I think this loss will only do good for them. Yeah, I mean, dude, they've got a gauntlet coming up here. Yeah, so exactly. they've got they, they, so they start off. So Penn starts off their season. So luckily, I mean, they're catching Penn on their first week of of the Ivy League season. But they have Penn this weekend. Uh, they've got Notre Dame the week after that. Princeton, a pesky Richmond team. They've got High Point, Lehigh, Denver, Providence. Marquette, Loyola. So, so like, do like their season doesn't really start to slow down until they get so that I guess they open up their first uh, their first Big East game against Denver, and then the rest of their Big East schedules like where it slows down for them a little bit. So they've got they've got a solid month here of going through the gauntlet. So you would hope that that loss. Is, is a loss that they need, but I, for some reason, I don't feel like it's going to be the only one that they have. No, but also, I think a wake up call is needed when you have all, like, I think wake up calls when you have so such high expectations. There's such, there's good, there's things as good losses or good things can come from losses. Um, so I think, I think that Georgetown. I, I, I listen, I, I know, I know what you're saying. I just think that. You, you would hope that it doesn't – it's not like the first – the first game of the season, it's never going to be a must win. Um, there were a lot of good things there. I think, I think though, what we saw is like it's going to be a lot of Tucker Dordovic, Graham Bundy Jr., and then like – like what, what else is there after? So they, they just have to figure out what else is there after. Um, meanwhile, I mean, dude, Hopkins looked really good in that game. Um, I, I've, I've been saying it for the past couple of days now. I think that uh, adding John Crawley to that staff is huge. Uh, I think that, you know, they play with a lot of offensive creativity, a lot of guys who can get the ball into the back of the net. Uh, Russell Melendez obviously had a, had a huge game. Uh, I love Brendan Grimes and I love uh, uh, who's they, they've got that big, big Canadian freshman right now. I think his last name's Colton or Matt Colton. Is, is that, I don't know. Kid, kid's a freshman and he's fucking huge. Um, get just able to put his shoulder down, get top side. So uh, Hopkins looked great in that game. They look great in the first half of the UNC game. Uh, then UNC just comes out and, Puts a nice little. I think they went. I think they outscored Hopkins eight to one in the second half of that game. So, you got any any anything on on Hopkins Georgetown or Hopkins UNC to to round that yeah, one I think out? That, I think you got to give uh, Hopkins their what, what's it called? Not like, giving them their praise. Give them their whatever. Hopkins deserves it. Um, I agree. I think that Carl is going to be a hell of a head coach for some program. They're going to be very lucky. Um, he'll probably eventually even come back to Hopkins. And coach them um, back and just uh, this delight. But my biggest takeaway from both games, honestly, is I just think that UNC is very, very underrated. That's an upset in itself, really. If we're talking about upsets all weekend long, was UNC over uh, Johns Hopkins? Technically, I think that UNC is great. I think they have a good balance between these. They have this highly impressive, high-ranking freshman class last year that was a little disappointing with Chris Gray, they're all sophomores now. Now you have like some senior leaders, um, some transfers, um, like you got like McGovern, Goldsmith, Tillman that can help these young guys. I think that UNC is going to make some noise this year. And I think that the ACC, I mean, it's not a hot take that they're the best conference, but I think there's just going to be some noise in the ACC with them and Syracuse can just like fuck some shit up. You know what I mean? Let it let it be known that the crease dive is the first yeah. podcast to say that the ACC is the best conference in college across this year. Um, I, no, I, year. I, I agree. I, I think that they're a good dark horse team to be yes. uh, like, I, I think heading into the season, you look at the ACC and you immediately think 
probably Virginia, Notre Dame, Duke. Then you probably put Syracuse ahead of UNC just because of the hype around Spalina. Um, so I, I don't know if, if it would have been crazy to say at the beginning of the year that UNC – on paper would have been the worst team in the ACC obviously still have a whole lot of lacrosse left. Uh, but listen, like any, any team you can throw out in front of Colin Krieg, I think is, is going to be okay. I think that Krieg uh, is, is a stud, definitely one of the best goalies in college across. I think that what dude, he gets so many, he backs up so many shots. I, I, I don't know. Obviously they don't keep track of the stat, but if they did, I mean, he gets them so many extra possessions, a um, lot of huge saves, big time saves and big time moments as well. And yeah, I mean, they're just pretty, they've got a lot of depth. They got a lot of guys. They might not have like a superstar in like, they're, they're not going to have anyone who's going to be in the mix of a Tuarton finalist. Uh, but they have a lot of guys who can do their job and, and put points on the board. So, uh, you know, they've, yeah, depth is definitely big for them. Yeah, and their defense is phenomenal. The kid Barton is a fucking stud. He's going to be a future PLL player. I, I really like what I saw out of UNC. And I know it's like an overreaction to like Hopkins or whatever, but I think that they're going to steal some wins against teams and can probably like make a push for the tournament, which it's crazy to say that about UNC. But given last year when you saw like UNC and Syracuse, those were kind of like wins at the top of the conference and the ACC had to have. You couldn't really have a slip up against one of those teams. Yeah. Uh, another ACC team who, you know, they, they drop a game after this is an, another, another tough take for us uh, that, that we're going to have to put our hand up and, and say that we fucked up. Uh, but February Duke was, was back in full effect last weekend. So for the second year in a row, Duke goes down to Jacksonville. Uh, now, listen, I, I don't know is if this is, maybe this is just the script, right? But, you know, if, if I don't think either team necessarily wants to follow the same script as last year, right? Duke not getting into the tournament. Jacksonville, after being the America's team for so many weeks, they didn't even make the tournament. Uh, but running back the same thing as last year. What's crazy about this game, though, is that no goals out of Walbaum or nothing from uh, – I, did, well, I don't even know if Walbaum played in this game. I don't think that he did. Uh, but then also no goals out of Dylan Watson. So, you know, you think about like the two biggest names for Jacksonville who would do the most damage, be the, the biggest offensive threats. Uh, and, and they weren't the ones who got the job done against Duke. Uh, it was just, you know, another just a cast of characters getting the job done. Um, and yeah, I mean, Duke just has. They got Finn fever. Yeah, nobody in their life has ever been more wrong about something than I was about. Duke, I just did that. And honestly, it's like it's nobody in the locker room's fault. Like Brendan O'Neill, not his fault. Uh, Danowski, not your fault. Like you all did your jobs. I didn't do my job. I couldn't keep my fucking mouth shut for the life of me. As soon as the words left my mouth, greatest team ever assembled, I knew for a fact that it was always the Finns money line. I, it was the biggest mush in the history of college across. Trying to look look back right now. All right, so so they did go undefeated in February in 2021. Uh, 2020, they opened up with a loss against Air Force. Yeah, 2019 was the loss to High Point. 2018 was the loss to Penn. So, yeah, I mean, 2021, the only year in the past – five or so or however many that Duke hasn't dropped a game in February. Considering last year was like the first year that they didn't make the tournament. I wouldn't say it's, it's much to worry about for Duke. Uh, but what I will say is that for the time being, Jacksonville is their daddies. Like there's nothing that they can oh, say without, about that. Without a doubt. I, there's a, uh, and, the, and the, the craziest part in my opinion about the game was that, Nobody really played bad for Duke. Like everybody kind of did their job. Like you, you like it's not like there was one stat or something that I honestly haven't 
like I don't know if it's the, what the ground ball battle or something like that was, but like goalies face off points. Like you got what you wanted out of O'Neill. You got three goals out of Dyson. You got one and one out of McAdory. Denanza puts home two. It's not like like they controlled the face off X. Like what else? If you told, like if you said all if you looked at the stat sheet and you said who won this game, you'd say Duke. Uh, but you're you're just not factoring in the 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 daddy factor there. That's uh, yeah. The da- I mean the daddy factor. It's it's insane. I mean, yeah, the Dolphins just Donowski is going to have to retire pretty soon if he just keeps losing to Jacksonville. Now I I wonder is is there is there a long con here right is is there you know is is there any deal in place between Jacksonville and Duke where you know maybe here's the thing Donowski might might retire soon from from Duke but where do people go to retire they go to Florida maybe he wants to you know go down and you know listen get getting a little bit older maybe he just wants to be an assistant maybe he wants to go hang out with John Galloway down in in Jacksonville uh, and you know he can kind of help build up the hype for that Jacksonville program now to make his job easier in the future. Maybe there, there's, there can be something going on there. A little something shady. No, that's, that's a, that's a good way to look. I was thinking more of like, Hey, Donowski like puts this game together so he can get like the February Duke woken up. Um, give like give Donowski. And then he, maybe he wants Galloway to be the next Duke coach. Or make Matt, or make Matt think that he does. It's not just a shoe in for you, Matt. You know, you really got to work on this offense. You know, there's there's some things working. There's some things working behind the scenes for sure. Yeah, fucking nepotism makes me sick. Oh, I love it. It's the <laughs> best. It's the best uh, because because if somebody succeeds with nepotism, you're like nepotism rocks. And as soon as someone as soon as someone doesn't succeed with nepotism, you only got the fucking job because you're a dad. You only got the job because of your uncle. I love it. It's hilarious in sports. Well, listen, Jacksonville is a lacrosse school, so good for the fans. Big, big win for them. Um, and and we'll see what they do throughout the rest of the season. Uh, definitely one of the better mid-major teams in, in the country this year. But I'll say right now, I'm not giving them the title of America's team just yet. No. Because you want to you you know team? you want to know who that title belongs to right now. It's the Merrimack Warriors, baby. Dude, this team coming in 3-0 and to start the season. Big win over Hofstra to start the year. A little come from behind win. They spank Holy Cross 14-9. to I, I actually have a question, uh, and you know this kind of goes back to – it doesn't have to just be about Merrimack. We can talk more about Holy Cross later. But then they also put a nice little beat down on LIU 15-9 to this past weekend. Uh, before we keep talking about Merrimack, Actually, no, we'll talk about Merrimack, then we'll go back to this. Uh, but Merrimack, 3-0 and to start the year. Uh, I mean, just looking really good. The, the Rooney brothers just leading the way here offensively. Uh, both guys with a bunch of goals and, and, you know, I think they have 18 points between the, three, or the two of them uh, through these three games. This is just a, it's a team full of dogs, right? A guy, group of guys who just get after it. Uh, the goalie looks like an absolute fucking psychopath. There was a little, little clip of him on social, just smacking the shit out of his own face with the stick. Yeah, um, I saw that. Lo- love a good psychopath goalie. Need those guys. Uh, they look good. They've got the highest shorts that I've ever seen in in the history of shorts. I need to know what the inseam is there. I think the average inseam on this team has to be like three and a half, a lot of thighs out, uh, which is tough for these guys uh, up in new England. Right. It's, Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, global warming, shout out global warming. Definitely. It's, it's not the coldest winter we've ever dealt with, but temperatures are still dropping later at night. Uh, These guys still just rocking thighs out. So Merrimack right now, they're a wagon. They're three and oh, they're generating a lot of buzz around the nation. Uh, and listen, I, I think that they can they can make some noise here. Yeah, I. So obviously, when I'm, I don't know what to think of the Merrimack hype. You're kind of selling me on the Merrimack hype, which makes me think that there's some behind the scenes workings with you and Merrimack. Because when well, they they like, sent oh, me a sweatshirt. Yeah. So this this whole Merrimack <laughs> propaganda, like I'm trying to get behind, but I'm just like I'm looking at it. I'm trying to find the answer. I'm trying to see the vision. I'm like. 
why is Mary Mac uh, America's team this year? And then I saw it. It was staring at me right, right in the face. Their top three leading scorers are all from Long Island. So that what made it think was like, yeah, of course it's America's team. Long Island is America. Um, Long Island is lacrosse. So that, that, that's, that's the only thing that uh, Mary Mac has going for me is that their uh, top scorers are from Long Island. And that and that's fair enough. Listen, uh, Long Island families are are a great time. Uh, love to see them out, out tailgates. They can bring the juice to any stadium that they're in. So, I would love to see Merrimack make a make a good run here and get to the tournament. Would love to see all those Long Island families just go nuts if if Merrimack wins the America East and gets themselves into the tournament. Um, I also think like the America East, like whatever team is doing the best in the America East, I feel like ends up being the de facto America's team, right? It was Albany mm-hmm. uh, for all those years. Like, like the America East is just a, it, it, it is just a, a, a greasy gritty, uh, but with like a lot of flash mixed in there as well. The conference in general, um, fun conference to watch fun conference to root for. So whoever's winning the America East, it's hard not to root for that team. You also had the Mercers. You had Jacksonville. Was there any other teams last year that were America's team? Well, Mercer more so just because of Sean Goldsmith. Still. Then, then, then I don't, I don't know. Like, obviously the 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 Mercer Hive sours the Mercer, um, but like that was like that was almost a meme. The, wow. The, 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 okay, so Mer- wow. Mer- Mercer, Mercer's a meme, to, and I no disrespect because Coach Danahy, absolute stud. He's going to build a great program in Mercer. They're not there yet. He's in his first year there. It's going to take a, a few years to bring that around. But the Mercer of of the past few years was was America's meme team. I think the Merrimack. There's, I think that there's legitimacy behind it. There. Speaking of America's team, you know how we talk about the. Ther- Terrio, Terrio from Brown being the people's goalie and Lark. I found a goalie that has stolen my heart. And I think I might have to get him on next episode. I haven't really cleared this with you. Um, I'm actually going to pull this. I'm going to do something for the first time. This is why you subscribe to the YouTube. Go to the YouTube right now. Uh, I'm going to show you this goalie that the lacrosse network, uh, they, they posted this on their TikTok. So shout out to them. It, it's, it's from the Syracuse Holy Cross game. I don't know if you've seen this. Wait, so is it going to be Dawson Friars of – so that's – So he had the behind the back yeah. right there, right? Wait. So he makes a save. Goes behind the back, behind the back. You have to do You got to show off a little bit, right? So I, I respect that. Then they fast forward. This is, this is the best. He makes a clean one-on-one save. <laughs> <It was> PTP. <laughs> Um, so so if you're listening to just audio right here uh first i mean just go to tln's instagram account or tiktok they probably posted it everywhere um but yeah so ho crow goalie dawson friars uh (laughs) just throws a nice little outlet pass behind the back completely behind his own end line um that's what i wanted to ask you about though so this was i i forgot that he had the the behind the back little pickup um silky smooth makes a lot of makes a lot of really good in tight saves like this kid plays with an edge to him he's got that flair but at the same time i don't know how i feel about a goalie wearing 99 now if there were any goalie out there who could pull off 99 it's this cat right here who's just kid plays this the the position with reckless abandon doesn't give a single fuck you throw a behind the back pass like that you don't give a shit so i do think that i don't know i'm not crazy about goalies in general wearing wearing high numbers right i, I think that there's a uh s- s- someone out there oh uh syracuse goalie where's where's 88 not even like that crazy about that uh 99 definitely that de- definitely threw up some red flags to me but watching the way that the kid plays i do think that he's he fits the bill for a 99 i i think 
I, so the thing, the thing that cracks me up about this guy is he makes some plays, and you're like, how did he end up at Holy Cross? Like this guy is good, and then he reminds you. <laughs> <laughs> he reminds you when he goes, goes behind the back with the, st- with the stick. He's just showing just, off. No, it's almost like he's trying to put on a show, so then he could go somewhere else next year. Like he's like, I'm at the dome. This is my. I'm on national TV. Like I'm not on the Patriot League Network, baby. I'm on. I'm on ESPN here. I mean, yeah, it, like it is. Like you know, all eyes are on you because all eyes are going to be on Spolina. So just by default, if Spolina's playing against you, all eyes are going to be on you. So yeah, I mean, you might as well make a little name for yourself. And uh, if just launching the ball BTB out of bounds is is going to get the job done, it's going to get the job done. I have to imagine that he is an absolute fucking nightmare to deal with in the locker room. I like there's not a oh, chance no. that he shuts up for a single second. Uh you froze on me. Oh, well, I, I, I said they that that cat's gotta be a, a nightmare to deal with in the locker room. Oh yeah. I mean, when you wear 99 and you throw on BTBs at left and right, you, you don't know what the guy's next move's gonna be. Um, imagine, I'm imagine, a night out, imagine a night out in Worcester, Massachusetts with that guy. You're just like, where where'd he go? Like, what's his next I, move? I'm I'm also going to imagine that he's the biggest uh, shampoo mooch in in team showers. This that I, I he's a guy who definitely has never showed up to team showers with his own body wash and shampoo. Always okay, so always bumming it off the guy next to him. I was gonna guess he's like your roommate, and you're looking at like you're like oh I just ran out of body wash. I just like need to borrow someone's really quick, and you go to Dawson's. And he has like the eight in one container where it's just like body wash, toothpaste, <laughs> mouthwash, just like everything you need. Mo- mo- motor oil. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You need, you need some gas. Just put it in there. Uh, all right. Well, you know, yeah. Get get that kid on. Um, but again, I'm, I'm not crazy about a goalie wearing 99. I think that there's some sort of sacrilege to it. But I also think that he plays the game like such a. Uh, a maniac yeah yeah um but end of the story is that uh merrimack is america's team and uh better better get on that mac wagon dukes before it's too late maybe they'll send you a a, a hoodie yeah i'm gonna wait for another team now fuck the mac whoa (laughs) whoa who said that uh oh uh oh Some Uh, some, some american east listener right now can win my heart over just saying. Ian McKay. Vermont. Just, just throwing it out there. Um, yeah. Any anything else from uh, from this past weekend that we didn't get to? Oh uh, well. Listen. Speaking of people being dead wrong about their uh, about some of their takes, Joey Spolina had a nice little ten goal weekend to uh, to to silence the critics. For the time being so uh five goals against albany on friday night five goals against holy cross on sunday i uh, really didn't get a chance to watch much of the holy cross game with super bowl sunday don't want to talk about the super bowl either um but that friday night game against albany syracuse looked good man I, and, and i don't know you know i can't imagine like albany's not the greatest competition anymore um but I mean, they, they put a beat down on them. That was a, you know, that, that was a bully game from Syracuse. Looked like they were definitely playing with a little, little extra anger after, uh, you know, some of the stuff that they were probably hearing throughout the week leading up to it. Uh, I think that, uh, listen, the, the Jackson Burt whistle kid going to be a problem for defenses in, in the ACC this year. Like if you're clued in on Hiltz and Spelina, um, you know, you, going to kind of forget about Burt Whistle from time to time, and he's going to make you pay. So uh, Spelina silencing critics, and Syracuse look look really good this weekend. I think Cole Curse is just a man. I think yeah. He's a dude, man. It's, Huge. Dude, the, the Curse family is just fucking mutants, man. He's fucking – I was very, very impressed with him uh, Friday against Albany. Um, watched a little bit of the Holy Cross game, but, man, I think that, like – his presence and his leadership for that team and that young team is just going to do wonders. Um, and even just speaking, who else was I thinking of when I, yeah, I mean, but just, Oh, Spelina. Yeah. Let's, 
He's, he can score goals, but I only saw two assists out of him this year. Selfish, ball hog, locker room cancer. That's what – That's what the, the, I'm going to get ahead of that one, all right? Um, I think that I think that what lacks Twitter, I need somebody come, to come up with a take that, like, he's just, like, a ball hog or something because he only has two assists. I need some hot take out there. I can't do it because I love him. He probably right now has the fewest assist out of any 22 – in Syracuse history without a doubt. So about a certain 22, how many games he played, but yeah, yeah, for, for sure. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that they gave him, I forgot that they gave him 22. That's what made the whole thing so bad. Yeah. Like, that's what added to it a little bit was just like, Oh my God. Um, that was a shit show. Uh, my cell. Yeah, yeah. Let's move into buy sell our first segment of the week. Uh, Dukes, how about you get us? You get us started off here. Who who are you buying? I am buying stock in Teddy Dolan. I think that some people are going to look at this being like, "Oh, Maryland just lost their goaltending, uh, their national championship goalie, the goalie that led them to two national championships in two years." Teddy Dolan, Maryland fans, calm down. He's going to be just fine. Um, I also have a I have a big thing for mid-major goalies that see a lot of shots. So we're talking like the Brett Dobsons that get like 20 saves a game. Um, even like Will Mark, the Syracuse goalie right now, put the LU, got a shit ton of saves. I think there's something to be said about goalies that have high save percentages, high number of saves with a weaker defense in front of them. Um, so Teddy Dolan had that for about four years. Um, and yeah, I think that, like I said earlier, this is what I wrote down in my notes was that he'll be a all American when it's all said and done honorable mention of some sort. He will be a PLL draft pick and uh, yeah, I'm buying stock in Teddy Dolan. Garden city. I'll be, I'll be honest. I, I thought that this was just going to be a, a, a suck fest for garden city the whole time that you mentioned them. But the, the point of a mid major guy who transfers out, who's already seen a ton of like that pretty, pretty valid point on your end. So I'm glad that you went there because then I was just going to have to figure out a way to like shit on Garden City. What I will say is, uh, how many saves did you end up having on Jared Newman? Or, or like, what, what, what did he? What was the final of, of that goal challenge? challenge? He met, he missed some shots. Honestly, yeah, I think he just did right. But, but, what, but what was the final on that? It's like six ten. I mean, if we're saying that I'm still the best goal in Garden City history, that is correct. How many people have beat? Uh, the fastest shot competition, the guy with the fastest shot in the world in a goalie challenge. I only have. So when people talk, well, what, about- I'm, what I'm saying is, is if a, is if a garden city goalie who was, was a backup could do that against Jared Newman, just imagine what Teddy Dolan could do. My, my name's down with all time greats. <laughs> my, it's shocking that I didn't get an invite to my alumni game against Manhattan. It's shocking that I, did. I missed that email. Do you, do you have the most saves against Will Perry in garden city goal tending history? Oh, I, I mean, yeah. I, I, all I had probably not Gutty because Gutty, yeah, Gutty probably slipped a few by me when I was a freshman, and by a few, I mean I don't think I probably had a single save on him. So uh, I think that there's got to be a Garden City goalie out there that has more on Gutty. But come on, but you, but you have, but you have Will Perry in your back pocket. <laughs> yeah, I, still walking him right now. <laughs> Uh, well, if I'm buying anything in college across right now, I am buying the parody. Uh, it's, it's been a while since we've had this. I think, you know, the past few years I've, I've been a little bit down on, on the fact that, uh, I've been down on the college across regular season. I think that, you know, Virginia and Maryland have been so far and away the best teams in the nation that wasn't worth getting your hopes up for anything during the regular season. I think that right now, uh, listen, Virginia still very much, a wagon and yeah, sure. It was only one loss for, for Maryland. So he can't look too much into it. Uh, but I do think that there are a lot of really good teams in college across this year. I think, you know, having a team like Hopkins who might not be all the way back yet, but at the very least they're going to be pesky all year. Um, Michigan is going to be pesky all year. You've got these schools like a Jacksonville, like a Merrimack who have the ability to be pesky all year. Uh, I think that, you know, with the transfer portal, I think that there is a lot of parity in college across this year. So uh, if, if last Saturday was any indication, uh, it's, it's going to be a, a nice and chaotic season of college across. Yeah, I think so too. 
And I still think the cream will rise to the cream will cry. Rise. The best teams will be at the top when it's all said and done. Yeah. yeah. For, 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 for me once, shame on shame on me. For me, for me, tw- you can't get fooled again. Next uh, up, who's we have selling? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so my sell this week, I am selling my brain. I'm selling stock in my brain because I don't, like I said, I don't even know what I think anymore. I don't really have a take about college across. I think that I should just sell my brain to a study on how one person could be so wrong about stuff so fast. Um, yeah, I, don't, I just don't I, – I, don't, I really don't know anything anymore. As soon as Saturday ended, I was just like, wow, look at this. We were, I am the worst co-host. Uh, I, I had the worst takes of the weekend in college across Twitter, which is hard to do. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Stock on your brain right now, it's it's definitely down. But I, I, I might buy the dip because I, I, I know that there's a take – there's a take somewhere in there that's ready to pop off, ready to be a gold mine. So, uh, yeah, it might not be the best. I'll, I'm gonna, I'll at least sprinkle in on on the dip of of your brain going down. What's up? And just going going back for those that have listened or the, to those that have followed me uh, on my journey the past couple of years, people know how low my my the brain and my stock has been. We're looking at COVID levels, brain dead right now. We're looking at like you could get like. A, maybe a, to the, a dime to the dollar on how bad my brain stock is. So that, that says a lot. Yeah, but here's the thing. You got to be just like Spolina, right? Even if the goals aren't dropping, you still got to fire off 15 more takes. So shoot or shoot. Um, I am going to sell the 10-man ride and not the critically acclaimed uh, newsletter that is sent out by our – Good pal Joe Keegs every week, uh, but the actual literal 10-man ride in lacrosse, I think that it is the dumbest decision that teams still make. I, I think that it's, you know, we saw it get dunked on Tuesday night. Tim Marcio with a nice little 65-yard bomb to the back of the net after UNC goes out with the 10-man ride. Colin Creed out of the cage. Uh, I just think with stick technology today where you can have a goalie or a pole be able to to just rip an 80 yard dart at, at any given moment. I think that there's just there's so much risk involved with the 10 man ride these days that weren't quite there 15 years ago. Uh, so I feel like we've been seeing a lot more of these full field goals because of the 10 man ride. Listen, there there might be a time here and there where you can break it out where it's gonna confuse a team's clear. Uh, but if you're just going 10 man, 10 man, 10 man, 10 man, it's only a matter of time before you get dunked on with a full field goal, like Tim Marcia and Hopkins had against uh, UNC. So selling the 10 man ride, but again, not the newsletter that you should sign up for from Joe Keeks. Good. sell. Um, mid major, major performance. All right. Uh, my mid major, major performance this week. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna slow my roll on uh, on on the Merrimack love here, but I will say, Air Force out of the A Sun, Air Force ripping off a win to start off their season against Denver. Uh, good for the what, what are they? Are they cadets? Air Force cadet? What what is what is the? Air? I feel like I should know that. I feel like they're not. Why do I think like Zags now or something? I don't know, but either way, uh, Air Force they get over a, they get over a loss against Ohio State. They come out with a nice little twelve to ten upset over Denver, uh, and you know Bill Tierney's final season little little stumble out of the gate there. Uh, let's see here, Brandon Dodd five goals on the game, so I guess Brandon Dodd also gets a, an extra little nod for my mid major major performance. Air Force Falcons. Falcons. Mid- okay, wow, it's way off. My mid-major major performance is a guy that hails from Florida. Is a guy that played at the club lacrosse ranks. It's my guy, Reed Smith, former MCLA All-American stud from Florida State. He's been at Jacksonville last year and this year. Two goals. Two goals against Duke this weekend. So how to give love to a club lacrosse player. Um, it's great. It's great to see someone make it out from the streets, as the kids say. Uh, the streets being the 
the MCLA, <laughs> the MCLA. Dude, speaking of Florida State, they uh, they put out their gloves and helmets the other day. They are looking crispy. They're also in my top ten. Uh, they would probably kick the shit out of Dayton if they ever played against each other. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe the MCLA stopped fucking screwing Dayton and kicking us out of the tournament and everything. They're just doing their very best to really fuck us left and right. But, yeah, you're right. All right, well, Reed Smith and uh, and and the Air Force Falcons, not the cadet. I don't, I don't even know what the fuck that was. Uh, congratulations on mid major major performance. You know what? Let's uh, let's let's talk about some lacrosse coming up this weekend. We've already done enough of uh, get getting into the getting into the past. We've got a huge slate of games on tap for this weekend, and that includes the Ivy League back in business. Uh, so everything gets started. We'll get started with Duke and and Denver on Friday night. So that's a, well, I guess Friday, little happy hour game, 4 p.m. on ESPNU. Uh, Duke, Denver, always a good one. I'll be honest, I don't have uh, any, not, not that there are numbers available, but I don't have the document right now that, would, that, that would potentially have uh, would, those I, numbers. I would, personally, I would personally say it's probably like a five and a half, hypothetically. And I would say that, in this game, do you have much thoughts? I mean, I think it's going to be cool to see Donowski and Tierney face off for the last time together, uh, two of the best coaches to ever coach. Two legends in their own right. Um, I think Duke absolutely fucks and absolutely spanks Denver. Yeah, I think that – I mean, here's the thing. They're both coming off of off a of, of tough loss, uh, but I, I do think that, you know, Duke – it's not like they – kind of like you said like no one really like screwed that game. it's just that you know jacksonville had the better day like duke still played really well so it's not like there's any there's not a ton of reason to be concerned at all for duke uh but now they they head into this game and plus it's a home game for duke mm -hmm. uh so you know they don't have to worry about travel they're a little pissed off uh brendan o'neill is still very much as unstoppable as it comes um so yeah i, I think that I think that Duke wins here, wins big, but this this could be a big respect game, right? Donowski and, and, and Tierney having their last little square off against each other. So maybe there's there's a point in this game where Donowski calls off the dogs a little bit, lets it be a little closer than it otherwise would have been. Good point of view. Good point of view to have maybe, you know, up seven with six minutes to go put in the uh, backups, something like that. Yeah. So, and then – Anything's possible from there. It could end up with a you know a quick couple goals from Denver to to keep it tight. So that would be one that I would actually just stay away from. Am I joking about the the respect aspect? Maybe a little bit, but I think that there's actually some of that. I actually sold myself on that. I don't know if I like Duke spanking them anymore. <laughs> all right. It's a great take. Um. All right. So that gets us going on. Love love a good Friday happy hour game. It's it's one of my favorite ways to head into a weekend. Uh, so 4 p.m. ESPNU. Uh, yeah, the Saturday games. This is where the Ivy League is back. So every Ivy team back in business, I believe. And let me tell you what, Dukes, this is this is going to be a big Saturday for you and your Harvard Crimson because out of out of all the teams in the Ivy, the Harvard is starting off with the biggest banger uh they've got virginia that's going to be a 4 p.m game so jerry Byrne, the harvard crimson taking on virginia uh where how do you feel about your book like this is this is where this is where your brain can come back right if no no, no don't okay. do no 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 i can't do that I can't do that I can't do that because i've already sold myself on harvard getting spanked virginia it's going to be tough to keep up with that Virginia offense. You're going to have to have a, an absolute day from the X, an absolute day from the goaltending from the specialists. And I'm not so quite so sure that Harvard has a guy at the faceoff X right now. So I think just being able to get the amount of possessions that Virginia's going to be able to get, keeping up with that high-powered offense, it's going to be very tough for Harvard. So I'll, I'll get ahead of that right now. If Harvard covers and wins, forget I said any of that. But <laughs> – but – um. I think this is just great to start off the year for Harvard because it's it's like you play them close. There's a, it's a it's a good loss. You win the game, you just beat the number one team in the country. And if you just get absolutely slaughtered, you just you're Jerry Bernie looking at the locker. This is why we play the games hard in the top. This is why we play the out of conference schedule that we play. 
Nobody has the out-of-conference schedule that we have. You know, coaches love saying that after getting spanked. Like, this is why we play the tough games in February, to prepare us for May. So, I've already talked myself into that. Um, but, yeah, I, I am big, on obviously, on Harvard in general this year. I just think it's a tough, tough first game. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's, it's a good win-win situation to be in for Harvard. Or I, I wouldn't even say it's a win-win, but a win can't lose, right? Yeah. Like. So yeah, you, you lose that game. It's it, there's there's moral victory. You can have moral victories in February. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not against that in February. Maybe maybe as we get a little closer to little little closer to you know April, April. then yeah. then moral victories can take a hike. But uh, in the meantime, so, uh, Penn also starting off with a big game. So we've got Penn and Georgetown. That's a twelve o'clock game on Saturday. Uh, looking here, if there were to be any action on this game, I, I'd probably say that Georgetown might be favored by one and a half. Um, listen, Georgetown need, needs to bounce back in a big way. Uh, we've got, uh, I mean, Penn coming out of the gates here. A lot, uh, lot of hype around Penn. Obviously going to be a, a lot of hype around Sam Hanley all season long. People having him as, you know, maybe maybe the top pick in the draft coming up. Uh, so this game is going to be down in Georgetown. Uh, one and a half. I Listen, I, I think. I don't I'm trying. I'm trying to think. I, I think I would take Tucker Dordovic and Graham Bundy over. Sam Han, like the combination of those, yeah, this combination of those two, I think outweighs Sam Hanley. Um, so I, I, I kind of like Georgetown to have a good bounce back in this one. Yeah, I like Georgetown in this one too, which makes me be like, if you're listening to this, you definitely should take Penn then. Uh, but yeah, I, I do like Georgetown to bounce back in this one. One that I don't know if you want to talk about, but I'll, I'll just say to the lacro- real lax rats in the Midwest out there. I'm going to be flying to Michigan tomorrow or Friday. So Friday I'll be in Michigan, Ann Arbor. So I start looking around. I'm going to the Michigan Michigan State basketball game on Saturday. I start looking around. I'm like, I wonder if Michigan lacrosse will be around. Michigan's playing Hofstra. If you're there in like the freezing cold, I will be there. So uh, Michigan Hofstra, I'll, I'll, I'll be attending. Get get a scouting report back for the cruise dive. Does why why am I? Am I picture? Does Michigan not have an indoor facility? Yeah, they gotta have something. They they gotta have a lacrosse game going on in Ann Arbor. Yeah, I, I, for some reason I feel like they, I feel like I've seen them play in, in a bubble before, but it could have been a, yeah, it's a, like a, like a, a Notre Dame. It might be like a Notre Dame situation. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, so Penn starting out off with uh with georgetown right out of the gates huge game for them uh harvard starting off with virginia huge game for them the rest of the ivy maybe not quite as much uh so the brown bears brown state uh shout out to larkin kemp uh the boys will be playing against quinnipiac that should be i mean that that should be a good win to start off the year for brown uh looking looking what other ivy league teams get cornell there. albany cornell albany which is it typically in, in recent history has, has been a, a, a solid game. I don't quite think that we'll uh, we'll see the same thing this year. I think that, you know, Cornell should, should handle them pretty easily. Uh, looking around for a number here. Oh, Cornell. Can't, 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 yeah. Can't, can't find it right now, but don't need it because Cornell's just going to spank them. Um, Nova and, Yale. On, uh, Nova Yale is on Sunday. Uh, so, I saw Nova plus two and a half, hypothetically. Yeah, Nova. Yeah, I mean, did think back to so what was it? I think 2018 and 19 might have yeah. been back to back one goal wins for Nova over Yale. Uh, past couple years hasn't been quite as tight, uh, but Nova looked really good against Penn State last Sunday. <clears throat> they've got another Sunday game coming up here. Uh, they've got Yale coming down to them, so. Uh, I, yeah, I think a good test for Yale out of the gates. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't think that this, you know, I think that this Nova team is, is pretty solid. Uh, yeah. So, you know, listen, also could, really could be, could be a nice little time to get that uh, Matt Brandel to Warton campaign started. Yeah. I think Matt Campbell's really good. I think Jessica Pohl is really good. So yeah, I think Nova, Nova's a good squad. I do think there's one game I do. I just don't want to glance over. I wanted to talk to you about, I think this is the fraud bowl. 
or like the who's back goal, Loyola versus Hopkins. And yep. I know we touched on it a little bit. Uh, I saw Loyola hypothetically minus one and a half against Hop. Want to get your thoughts on that game? Um, I think that line says a lot about how good the numbers analytically might speak in favor of Loyola, just given the competition that, you know, Loyola only had one game against Maryland. So it looks like the people hypothetically making these lines would say, no, Loyola is pretty legit. Um, But yeah, I'm probably going to take Loyola minus one and a half in this one, just given off the, I didn't expect that. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, just kind of looking at the way, I think that Hopkins, this defense has been, you know, maybe not a, it, it's always going to be defense is always going to be overlooked by me just because I'm, I'm always going to focus more on the offensive side of the ball. So I don't know if the defense has been overlooked by everybody, uh, but definitely overlooked by me. I think that their six on six defense has looked really good so far this year. Um, but then looking at the way that Loyola did a lot of their damage against Maryland in transition, I'm not totally sure if if Hopkins will be able to stop that. Um, so if Loyola can kind of do the same thing where they just run and gun, against Hopkins, then yeah, I, I kind of, I like Loyola in this one. <clears throat> if it gets into some settled six on six ball on both sides, I, I, I do like the way that this Hopkins defense is like, they play, do they play tough? They, they get a lot of, they force a lot of shot clock violations. Um, you know, even in that game against UNC, like I think they had one possession where they reset the shot, like UNC offense reset the shot clock, like, two different times and still uh, ended up with a shot clock bio in the end. So uh, Hopkins D pretty good. Hopkins offense. Very good. Uh, Loyola. I I like what I saw out of them, but I'm just not Not totally sure if it was the fact that, you know, Maryland and McNaney just didn't have a great day uh, or if they, are legit. So right now I've just seen more out of Hopkins. So I'll say Hopkins, but I'll also probably end up being dead wrong about that one. I do like though, the, that being the who's back bowl. So I think whoever loses that one, you're banned from being back this year. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, Syracuse, Maryland. I'm interested. Uh, I have some thoughts on this game. I would like to see who gets matched up. I want to see if uh, Brett Maker gets uh, matched up on uh, Spolina. Because I think that someone that has, uh, I don't even know, McCarr, Mick, or whatever, uh, somebody that plays defense like him using a lot of body, big, strong, a man that's still in college, uh, where Joey Spelina likes to use his body and try to body people up. I think Joey Spelina is going to, going to, going to really, if that, if that's the matchup that they go for, I think he's going to really see the, uh, the staunch difference between a senior and a freshman and how much like it, it could be like a man versus a boy from summer league last year. So that that's a matchup I'm intrigued by. I mean, either um, way, he's either way he's going to be matched up against an All-American. So it's it's either going to be sure. the car or it's going to be Zapatello. You know, so like regardless, like this is going to be a, a tough matchup for him. Um, the but I will like the one versus twenty-two matchup would be so sick. I, I be How iconic. Many, it's never happened in history, probably. No, no, never. So I I think at least for a couple possessions, we need to make sure that it happens. Um. Listen, I I think that this is a game that Syracuse riding a little high right now, feeling good about themselves after two, you know, two good wins, but not against like the greatest competition of all time. Uh, Maryland, obviously going to be coming off off that loss to Loyola. They've got their, you know, the tails tucked between their legs right now, but it's going to spring out and just slap Syracuse in the face in this one. So I've got I've got the Terps pretty big in this game. I think that this is a a big bounce back, shut the haters up game out of Maryland. Yeah. I think Teddy Dolan's all American campaign starts for sure. And then um, (laughs) I think Teddy Dolan, this might be the last game that Teddy Dolan plays in college because he's going to go straight to the PLL. He's he's going to he's going, Teddy Dolan's going straight to the PLL after this game. No, I I already spoke it out. Once this gets released, it's probably going to be released like later tonight. Teddy Dolan's college career done because I just fucking opened my mouth and hyped him up too much. Not his fault, all mine. And then uh, last game, I wanted to get Ohio State minus one and a half against UNC hypothetically on Sunday. I like UNC in that one. I think the Ohio State's defense is very good. I think that Jack Myers is one of the most underrated players in college across. I think that Mitchell Pelkey is really good at YouTube. Um, but I, I just think that UNC is uh, 
is going to get this one. I was really impressed by Logan McGovern, especially you spoke highly about the Johns Hopkins defense. I think Ohio State probably has the best defense, arguably, in the Big Ten. Um, then Maryland is pretty much a toss-up for me. But um, I think UNC is going to get it done. Yeah, I think this is just a big uh... – it, like kind of, you know, SEC football, right? Like it's it's one of those ones where our, it's, it's going to be – it's a big game for both conferences. Yep. So if, if, if you're an ACC fan, you got to root for the ACC because this is a big matchup between ACC and Big Ten. I think both of these teams, neither of them are at the top of their conference, but both of them are, are very much in the mix. Uh, so whoever wins here, that, that'll just give, uh, <clears throat> you know, that conference a little bit more strength. When it, when it comes time for you know uh, you know tournament selection and shit like that, agreed. Uh, yeah, I mean, a couple other good games out there, but you know, I pr- can't get around to watching all of them. Um, not on this podcast. Yeah, not 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 on this podcast. So, any, anything else you guys are are excited about? Listen, text us. Right, hit us up on on Twitter. DM us at the crease dive, DM us on Instagram at the crease dive, ask us about games. We'll talk lax with you until, until the cows come home. Uh, but just for time constraints on this podcast, can't get around to all of them. So that is, uh, I guess week two of college lacrosse. Uh, so a lot of games Friday night, Saturday, all day, Sunday afternoon. Great, great lineup of college lacrosse. Uh, dudes, we got any, anything else? We want to rank really quickly. We'll just go through, because we said this last episode, we ranked the top five places we've watched college uh, lacrosse or just watch lacrosse in general. So uh, I guess I'll start it off going five to one. Okay. This, uh, number five, places to watch uh, places to watch lacrosse game. Number five, Manhasset High School at night. You know, I'm speaking like a uh, Shaman versus Manhasset lacrosse game, maybe even two, two college programs. Garden City versus Manhasset. There's nothing like Manhasset High School at night. Some people might not like that answer, but it's fucking awesome. Number four, Rutgers Grass Field. When we got a little taste of the grass field at Rutgers, I wanted all of it. I wanted the whole pie. Rutgers Grass Field, there needs to be more games played there. Three, Hofstra. I love watching games at Hofstra. It's, I wanted to even put it one. Um, watch them at night, during the day. Always awesome. Great quarterfinals atmosphere. Um, it's great for state championships. Love Hofstra. Two, Arlotta, Notre Dame. Uh, we, we, we say it a lot on this podcast. You won't really find a better place to watch uh, a college lacrosse game than that grass um, when it's like a spring day. It's fucking awesome. Number one, best place I've ever watched college lacrosse game or lacrosse in general, Fairfield University. Fairfield blew my mind with how good the attendance was for the PLL. Nice facilities, nice turf, perfect lacrosse stadium. Fairfield U is my number one. All right, that's a that one's out of out of left field. I, I would I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think anyone else might have that. I I don't think that anyone else will have that, but that's. That's why you're the best in the biz. Uh, my f- top five venues to watch a lacrosse game. Going to start off with, uh, so this one's <clears throat> more for box lacrosse than anything. I'm not even going to attempt to say the name, but the uh, the the newer box lacrosse facility on Onondaga Nation. Um, so again, I, I'm not going to try to pronounce what, what the arena's name is, uh, but one of the coolest spots that you could ever be uh, really special place place. Just looks sick. A lot of like big open windows, uh, just like wooden arches throughout the whole thing. So sick venue there. If you ever get a chance to go through the on the nation, go check out that venue, uh, especially while the game was going on. Uh, number four, I'm going to go. I'm also I got a lot of local bias here as, as Duke just had with long Island, but I'm going to go Franklin field on this one. Uh, so home of the Penn Quakers, uh, sick facility, uh, just a lot, lot, lot of history in that building. Most of it because of track and, and football, you know, with the Eagles playing there uh, years and years ago, but a really cool venue to watch a college lacrosse game, especially if you were there to watch Penn upset Duke in 2018. Uh, number three, I'm going to go with Arlotta, uh, same, same re- I mean, Arlotta on a nice May Saturday afternoon doesn't get better than that. Uh, you can tell 
tell the co-eds out on the hill have been boozing it up a little bit, having themselves a good day drink, uh, electric atmosphere at Arlotta for those games. Uh, number two, this, this answer is going to change for pretty much everybody. Uh, but I'm going to say whatever your, uh, alma mater was so going back to where Ooh. you you went to school um so for me it's patterson field at her sinus college because you go back to where where you went to school you never have better beers watching a lacrosse game than you do with with all your old pals going up to you know chirping chirping the other team chirping the refs having a good old time uh so wherever you went to school that's number two number one it's chalk I know it. I gotta go Homewood. Okay. Okay. Did, did, I, did you think I was gonna go with the dome? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, 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 I was I was thinking dome, but I, I just I the dome maybe in February. Um, uh, but Homewood and like specifically Homewood, maybe in like a like a four o'clock start that like game starts off in the daytime but then turns into night. Uh but listen, I mean Baltimore fucking I I would I would say listen Philly on Long Island were better at lacrosse than Baltimore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, but, I fucked but up. Ball, I fucked but Baltimore up. but Baltimore fucking loves lacrosse listen, way more. So like you go down to Homewood for a game uh and it's just lax rats everywhere, lax is in the air. Say whatever you want about the band, but it definitely adds to the atmosphere so homewood is my number one i fucked up i should have included homewood i fucked up you want it want me to say i fucked up i fucked up there <laughs> uh oh. you've got another venue though that you'll be heading to next week for for a couple lacrosse games so why don't we uh close out the episode with uh t- talking about that yeah so we got the pll championship series coming up next week jake marsh will be on the call uh, six on six just want to get the exact location. It'll be in Washington, D.C. Um, I want to make sure that I say exactly where it will be so people can buy tickets. I will put it in the link. I'll put it on. But it's going to be February 22nd to the 26th, PLL Championship Series. Um, it'll be a great time. The top four teams from last year. So we got like the Atlas, the Chrome, uh, the Whip Snakes, and who am I missing? The archers. So you might not notice no water dogs. Water dogs were not a top four t- team last year. Still on the championship. It'll be a very fun time. Jake Marsh will be on the call. Me and Billy will be hanging out at the beer garden all fucking week. I'm going to be entertaining clients. We will be trying to do a beer for every goal to see how long that lasts. Um, we got some really good ideas that we're going to try to bounce out. Um, going to be responsible about it. And um, it should be a very great time. If you're in the area, Come on down. I'll be there Tuesday till Saturday morning. So I'll be there for a good chunk of time. Come grab a beer with me and Billy. We'll chop it up a little bit. We'll talk lax. Um, we'll try to do even some faster shots. So just um, buy some tickets, come down. Um, it'll be a great time. Yep. PLL Championship Series. And then that, I'm pretty sure that's all like on ESPN Plus. It's on ESPN, like ESPN, yeah, ESPN yeah. Plus. But seriously, so. if you're in the area, come to, come check it out. The Beer Garden is going to be a, a awesome experience if you want to see me at my most absolute vulnerable i'm going to be a menace and uh it should be a very very fun time for all ages likes so if you like to drink you like to have a cro- watch across come hang with us if you have kids that want to be in the premiere zone bring them down go to the premiere zone it will be a great time just just a little something for everybody what's what's better than that nothing what's just better than that what's nothing better than lacrosse all. no lacrosse um oh before i I forget just want to uh just wanted to mention because you know we are mentioning pll and you did mention water dogs there uh ryan brown just announced that he will be calling it a career so congrats to brownie uh in in retirement great career out of him fucking six shooter and that's that's good news for a lot of goalies around the league that they don't have to face that shot anymore so uh congrats on the career yeah congrats on the career ryan uh go out on top amazing career goes down as one of the best shooters of all time I think you'd, I'd be remiss without saying congratulations to Mac O'Keefe. You are officially now the best shooter in pro lacrosse. The debate's yeah, you're, you're, the, you're, the, you're the sling god of the moment. Yeah, you're the sling god. Exactly. So, uh, Ryan Brown, one of the best shooters of all time. 
All right. Well, that is going to do it for this week's episode. Make sure that you are subscribed to us on YouTube. Uh, these these episodes will be out every Thursday on YouTube. Going to try to get the audio out on Thursdays as well. But if you want to make sure that you get the, the episodes as soon as possible, make sure that you're watching on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel. Like, comment, do all that shit. Uh, follow us on social. We are at The Crease Dive on both Twitter and Instagram. And in the meantime, we'll be keeping it low to high until the day we die. We out.